History, like a swamp, can be dark and murky and just as fascinating. Finnezy Swamp covers thousands of acres of wetlands. It's home to animals as diverse as otters, beavers, alligators, herons, ospreys, eagles, and many more. Archaeologists believe that humans inhabited this mire for at least 10,000 years, maybe much longer. But how much, no one knows. In comparison, European habitation on these shores is a very recent development and a little easier to trace. Within three years of General James Oglethorpe's founding of the Georgia colony, he sent a party under the command of Noble Jones up the Savannah River as far as navigation was possible. The plan was to establish another town. The settlement was named Augusta, in honor of Princess Augusta, wife of Frederick, Prince of Wales. The Savannah River provided an ideal trade route inland. In 1739, construction began on a road from Savannah, so this opened up many more opportunities. This fact was not lost on entrepreneurs, so Augusta became a center of commerce. One such trader was young Ferdinand Victor Francois Finizzi. Ferdinand was a native of Italy. His parents died when he was young, so was sent to live with his aunt in France. After some time there, he emigrated to the American colonies in 1778 and served with one of Lafayette's regiments under Marshal Rochambeau during our War for Independence. He married Margaret Candow of Rhode Island and moved to Georgia, west of Augusta. Buying and selling land to new settlers, he earned enough money to help finance a military force for protection against Indian raids. As commander, he earned the rank of major. He opened the first general store in the town of Lexington and established another in Augusta. Advertising cheap goods, among them he sold groceries, cotton, tobacco, deer skins, beeswax, tallow, and various liquors recently received from Europe and the northern states. An interesting controversy arose when a grand jury indicted him for selling peach brandy at rates above those prescribed by law. Naturally, he sprung to his own defense with a clever letter published in the Augusta Chronicle. Nevertheless, Finnezy was a man of sterling character. In the book, Notable Southern Families, Volume 1, the compilers noted. He established a home in Georgia and acquired great wealth and made a reputation for honesty and integrity of character, which was also a legacy to his family, one of the most powerful in Georgia. Landing absolutely without fortune, but possessed of indomitable will and talent, he left his children the foundation of a fortune. The Finnezys had five children. They built their home on this site near Stevens, Georgia, and called it China Grove. It was near a crossroads, so he included a hotel and tavern. Major Finnezy was very business savvy. Margaret died in 1815. Major Finnezy died in 1818 at the age of 57. Some of the Finnezy family continued to live and work in the Augusta area. John Finnezy, one time mayor of Augusta, established a mill on nearby Butler Creek. Interestingly, Eli Whitney, inventor of the cotton gin, is said to have first operated his groundbreaking machine at Finnezy's mill. Today's visitors to Finnezy Swamp will not see the Finnezy Swamp of the past. The swamp is nearly surrounded by industrial processing plants and the airport is close by. The land has gone through many changes. For a time it was a family farm and used for cattle pasture. It later became the site of Gracewood, a mental health institution and beef cattle farm where patients worked as laborers. Not only that, the city of Augusta dumped raw sewage into Finnezy Ditch, which eventually emptied into the Savannah River. And the city used Butler Creek as a waste and stormwater channel. With the Federal Water Pollution Control Act of 1948 and amendments in 1972 with the Clean Water Act, the city had to change its ways. Man-made wetlands were constructed. And to comply with federal regulations, 
The Finnessy Center for Water Sciences was established as an educational facility. Many miles of trails follow embankments around ponds offering grand vistas, while boardwalks wend their ways through woodlands and overbogs. Wanderers are sure to see wildlife during their visits. Bird watchers arriving early can set up their cameras to capture those highly anticipated shots of the most elusive species. Yes, there are alligators. You will be warned. Marvel at these fearsome species from a distance. Don't feed them. Botanists, both professional and amateur, will appreciate the wide variety of plant species. The Finnessy Swamp is south of the fall line, an approximately 20-mile wide geological boundary that cuts across Georgia from Columbus to Augusta. To the north, there is the higher elevation that, during the Mesozoic era, was the coast of the Atlantic Ocean until the sea receded. There you'll find Piedmont crystalline rocks, the topography and plants endemic to it. To the south, there are the upper coastal plain sedimentary rocks, along with the terrain and flora native to that environment. What a wonderful transformation has taken place here. From a polluted dead zone to a thriving refuge for wildlife and nature lovers. As an educational institution, Finnessy Swamp Nature Park has facilities to accommodate group tours, classes, and camps. The visitor center features a small gift shop and displays of taxidermied animals of the kinds you might see here, and a docent to answer any questions you may have. As of now, there is no entry fee. The Finnessy Center for Water Sciences opens at 7 a.m. year-round and closes at 7 or 8 p.m., depending on the season. We thoroughly enjoyed our visit. Bring your cameras, walking shoes, bug spray if you like, and lunch. Just don't feed the gators. Thanks for watching. Please give us a thumbs up to like this video, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel. To learn more, click on the description below.